Hello, in this video I will be showing you how to interface an MPO6050 sensor with the Raspberry Pi port. An MPO6050 sensor is a MEMS device with a 6 axis or a 6 degrees of freedom inertial measurement unit sensor an IMU sensor in short. So the 6 axis consists of a 3 axis accelerometer and a 3 axis gyroscope. In addition to these components we have an inbuilt temperature sensor and a digital motion processor which makes complex calculations on itself and makes the work of the microcontroller much easier. The MPU6050 sensor is generally accompanied with the model number of GY-521. So let's get started with the pin connections now. So here we see 8 pin here. So these are for the auxiliary buses and this is for the interrupt and here we have the VCC ground SCL SDA pins so we will be setting up in the I2C communication format with the Raspberry Pi board so the VCC we give into the 5 volt pin the ground the ground pin the SCL with the SCL pin and the SDA with the SDA pin of the Raspberry Pi so this sensor can be used to identify the velocity, the rotational velocity, the orientation in the space and many more other parameters using the addressing for specific registers set up on this sensor. We'll be seeing it in the code that we'll be writing their addresses and writing some bytes of data onto it. Analyzing those values, we'll be getting a lot of parameters on which we can apply for any other applications. So the data coming from it would be a 16-bit data which is generally in a 2's complement form. So I'll show you some of the working modules here. So this is the accelerometer reading, the way the block is tilting and all is recorded there. So the next one we see the rotations here, orientation and the polarity of the rotation. So all this data can be generated from the single sensor. As we were talking about some of the specific registers, let me show you some of those much needed registers which are useful for our computation. So this is the power management register. So this has got the read and write type options. So this is used to wake the module and also to reset it to the defaults. The next register is the sample write register. This tells us about the sampling rate, the rate at which the samples are generated from the sensor. To get a balanced sampling rate, we use this register. Then we move on to the config register which is used for configuring our sensor with the Raspberry Pi board. So these are the initializing command and then followed by the int enable that is the interrupt. So here we are accelerometer config. So this is for configuring the accelerometer present in the MPU sensor. The next one is for the gyro. So all these configuration settings are set up for the gyro as well whenever we initialize this register. Then we have the accelerometer output registers here. The underscore H says that it's a high byte and underscore L tells us it's the lower byte. Register addresses are given here. So whenever you program the module, you have to use these registers, especially the hex register addresses. So 0x followed by the hex register address given here will give you the desired results. So in here, this is only the read type. So we can only read data from this registers followed by the gyro. So the same goes with the gyro as well. The XYZ gyro outputs along with the higher bytes and the lower bytes. So these are those specific registers and you need to use them while programming. So these are the full scale ranges and their LSB sensitivities. So we have a relation between the scale ranges and the sensitivity. More the sensitivity, the lesser we tend to go in range. That means to say that for a shorter range, we'll be able to get the most sensitive readings of the sensor. So here we see the full scale range is plus or minus 2G, whereas the value of the sensitivity is 16384. That is quite high. So we'll be able to record even a very minimal movement of the sensor in this particular range. If we try to increase the range, the sensitivity factor reduces here. So you observe the sensitivity factor falling to a value of 2048 for the maximum full scale range here. So in applications where you need a lower range and higher sensitivity values you could be using this range with this sensitivity factor for getting proper outputs. 
So these are for the gyroscope. So you observe the same relation here. The scale is quite low, plus or minus 250 degrees, and the LSB sensitivity is 131. So as the full scale range increases, the sensitivity value decreases to a value of 16.4 for the maximum, plus or minus 2000 degrees per second. So as per your application, you can modulate your sensor to which sensitivity or to which scale it should match and you can use it that way. So this was all about the MPU 6050 sensor. Now let's move on to the hardware setup to see how it works. Now that we have gone through the circuit diagram, let's check the hardware and see it's working now. So we have a closer look at the connections here with the MPU. So this is our MPU module here. You can see the VCC, ground, SCL and SDA, other pins which are concerned with. I have aligned four wires like this on the board. So I'll be slotting it in this way. So you can see the axis pointing here. The axis on the x direction which is pointing up there and the y direction which is pointing this way. So when you place the breadboard like this, then this should be our original point. The origins here. So this is connected to the I2C communication to the SDA and SCL lines. This is the SDA orange wire and the white wire be the SCL part, the black wire at the ground and the red one the power. So these are the connections. For power we have chosen five volts. So that is one thing. So let's power up the board and check the results now. So now I've powered up my Raspberry Pi. Huh? So here if you look at the module, there's a small LED glowing. That tells us that the power is properly supplied to the module. Once the board connects, we'll be able to access it. Now that you've connected the board, so let's go on to run the program and check the working of the sensor. So you can see the terminal is open here, Raspberry Pi terminal. And I've entered the directory in which I've placed all my code files. So before going to run the program, Let's check the status of the connection. So as it is connected with an I2C communication mechanism, so you can use the command I2C detect to get the address and then use it in the code for communication purpose. So this is the command. So 68 is the address. So the hexadecimal address should be 0x68. So let's run the program now. So with this particular orientation, we are getting the gyroscope and the accelerometer values the gx gy and gz values are for the gyroscope and ax ay az are for the accelerometer so let's change the orientation now to see if the sensor is really working huh? So this is a rotation along y direction. Let's see the changes in the y values, x and ay and gy values. Let's go for the other way around.
Okay. So let's go for changes in the x direction. the other way. So this shows that it's working quite well. There might be a certain offset actually for the calibration purpose. So you need to look into the calibration part, set the offsets in the code and good to go now. So this was the implementation part. Let's move on to the code explanation now. So here we are with the main code file. So let's go through it now. So to start with, we import the assembus module, which is the assembus module for the I2C communication part. So Next time we import the sleep function from the time module. So followed by some register initialization as we mentioned in the circuit diagram. So we'll be initializing the registers with the respective addresses which are already defined for the module. So these are those registers, the power management, sample rate, config, uh, gyro config the interrupt enable then the output registers for the accelerometer and the output registers for the gyroscope so the next part we see the function definition of MPU in it for initializing the MPU sensor so in this we write the sample rate register that is writing the byte data which we get from the MPU to the specific registers so writing the sample rate register then we move on to the power management register so then to the config register the gyro configuration register and then the interrupt enable register so in all these registers we use the bus.write byte data function in which we use the device address along with the next argument which says the MPU registers address that is whichever respective address you want to write it to so the next function is the read raw data function which takes the address here as the argument so the accelerometer and the gyro values as i said are of 16 bit data length so the starting part of the byte the first 8 bits would be stored as the high and the next 8 bits would be stored as a low which makes up one byte each we concatenate those two higher and the lower values and store it in one variable value but to get a signed value from the MPU 6050 we use this if condition where we say that the value is greater than 32768 then 65536 must be subtracted from that specific value so after doing that we just return the value and we get the signed value from the sensor now so here we have two commands there is the bus variable which has the smbus dot smbus1 that is for the newer versions of the raspberry pi boards so if you are having an older version of the raspberry pi board then you can go for the smbus dot smbus0 so the next one is your device address that is 0668 which we got from the i2c detect command so we initialize the mpu sensor and then print the data from the gyroscope and the accelerometer so while true read accelerometer raw values it keeps reading the raw values which is getting from the sensors and then the gyroscope same functioning and here as per the full scale range of plus or minus 250 degrees for the gyroscope and plus or minus 2g for the accelerometer we use these offsets to normalize the data so this is the normalizing part once the data is normalized we are ready to print it 
not given a specific format in which it should print so as you've seen in the output screen you had seen the data printing in specific order the gx gy gz followed by ax ay az so in this format would be printing and then put it to sleep so that was a code explanation so in this video you have seen how to interface an mpu6050 with the raspberry pi board using i2c communication and then you see how the sensor reacts whenever you change the orientation of the sensor so you can use it in many different kinds of applications in your DIY projects and see how it works to get the code for this project you can click the blog link given in the description below thank you